So, a savings account is a place where you can store your money securely while earning earning interest. Unlike investment accounts, they are federally insured, okay. which means up to 250000 of the money in your account can be covered if the bank failed. So that means that the, something happens to the bank, you get some part of your money back. How about terms of a savings agreement? Do you guys know what those are? What the terms are? Uh, terms. <laughs> Are you good? Yeah, I'm good. I'm so dramatic. Oh my god, dude, what if your babe is like my comment? Sorry, I'll be your pack. I gotta go scream. Mute your mic. Don't mute me. Don't mute your mic. Alright, so interest is banks, the banks pay you interest for keeping your money in their institution. So you deposit money there, they pay money for you to pay put your money there. It's a nice way to earn more money. Liquidity is the ability to get money from your account easily and quickly. Low minimum deposit, amount of money you must have in your account at all times to keep it open. So they'll set, when you set up a checking or savings account, they will tell you the restrictions, what, how much money needs to be in the account at all times. Sure, maturity is how quickly you can get interest on the money you earned. So choosing a savings account. So there's a regular savings account. Uh, this is a type of bank account used to safely store your money while earning some interest. There's a certificate of deposit, or CDs they're known as. Uh, it is a type of federally insured saving account that has a fixed interest rate and fixed date of withdrawal, known as maturity date. CDs also typically don't have monthly fees. Uh, money marketing saving account. That is a savings account with some check some checking features. They typically come with checks or a debit card and allow a limited number of transactions each month. Traditionally, they have offered higher interest rates than regular savings accounts, but these days these rates are similar and money markets often have higher minimum deposit or balance requirements than savings accounts. So compare your options before picking a money market. Checking accounts. So you have your savings account and a checking account. So what is a checking account? Oh, that's, that's, like a, that's like when you put your money in, but like you can't, like, like you can't have like, like you can't just like not, like it's not like you can have a certain amount of money in there, like you have to keep on adding money into it. Yes. Uh, so it's a service provided by banks that allow individuals to deposit money and withdraw funds from a federally protected account. You could use personal checks in place of cash to pay for things. You can also use electronic debit cards or ATM cards uh, to access individual accounts or, or make cash withdrawals. Do, either, do any of you have a checking account? I only have a savings account. No. Okay. Uh, so yeah, so once you get where you start working then probably your parents will get you a checking account um, we'll talk about that in a little bit so what is interest anybody we kind of already uh, covered a little bit is that Thank like you. say that again things you like in regular terms, yes, but we're talking about <laughs> money. I'm stopping my mouth with hot pot. Wait, no. Pizza rolls. Ah, yes. Hot pocket. <laughs> ah. Ah, um, interest is, it's like, it's the, like the deal that you have with the bank, like the type of account you have. Somewhat. Uh, so the amount you earn on your money. So like I said, so you deposit, say you deposit $500 into the bank into a savings account. That money will earn interest at a certain percentage rate. 
that the bank tells you. So let's say the interest rate is 5%, whatever. So your $500 will keep earning 5% interest every, I'm assuming month, I'm not 100% sure, but that'll be set up on your agreement. What, how much interest rate your interest your money would get. Uh, so some banks pay interest if you keep your money in their bank. So that's good to know if your bank does do that. That'd be a question for your parents. So how much interest uh, will you earn on a checking account? So this does vary from bank to bank and account to account. So depending on what type of checking account you have and the bank, one bank using the same account could be different than the, another bank of the same account. So you just have to make sure you do your research when going into this. So, do I pay a monthly fee for checking for the checking account? Uh, you do. Yeah. Most, most banks do charge you a fee. They, oh, really? Yeah. Um, they may be. Wait, but do I have to do this when I'm older? Can I just like have money and just use it? Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, you don't have to have a checking account, but oh, okay. it's nice. We'll get. Uh, there's a little video that I'm gonna play a little later on that'll show you everything, but um. Some fees are more associated with if you overdraw, have a bounce right. check, like those type of things. Right. Like my not, bank, every month they give me cash back. Like if I use my debit card a certain amount of times, they give me like $10 back. Yeah. Uh, yeah. ATM fees, they give it back. So like most ATMs, if it's not your bank's ATM, they charge you a fee for it. Yes. Uh, my bank pays it back. So are there charges using the ATM? Oh, there we go. Nadia just said yes. Uh, oh. It does vary from bank to bank. Like her bank, you do get that money back. Uh, my bank, I don't believe we get that money back if I use an ATM outside of my coverage. Are there charges for making a deposit and withdrawal? Uh, some banks do charge you for that. Some don't. If it's your home base, you won't get paid to do that. Um, just make sure you're within your network. How soon can I withdraw the money after I deposit it? Again, it varies bank to bank. Some may make you wait a few days, some couple hours or right away. Can I use the interest or the internet to manage my account? Yes, you can. Nowadays, pretty much every bank has an app or a website that you created an account for, um, or just go on your phone. Penn Security has one. Yeah. yeah. Like I said, most banks are now in the 21st century where they create uh, an app. And I don't know if you saw that Kim asked a question saying, do you have to um, deal with a bank at all? I did not see the chat pop up. Um, what do you mean, Cam? Do you have to deal with the bank? I don't know why my chat's not popping up. It might be because, uh, well, mine's coming up because I have the little bar on the bottom that's a, like, mute, stop video and everything, like, at the whole. So that's why I'm seeing notifications every time. All right, so, Cam, okay, what do you mean, type in the question, what do you mean do you have to deal with the bank? Yes, Angelis, you have your hand raised. I'll wait. Cam said, can you just keep all your money and not even put it through a bank? No! Bank? Oh, never mind. Never mind. <sighs> you can, but then you wouldn't be making money on that. And if your, God forbid, your house was to burn and you lost all your money in your home, then you won't be able to get any of that back because it's you wouldn't know how much money is there. Um, are the banks the most... are the safest things to do i mean they should be but you have to do your research i mean i feel it's bad i mean it's good to keep some money home just in case something was to happen but right I, especially I, oh god uh, i just wouldn't keep all my money home right i mean especially the way that things go anymore is that people tend to buy things online you can't buy things online with cash yeah. If you have a debit card, you don't have to, like, 
I know they have like the Visa gift cards you can buy, but there's like an activation fee and you have to buy a new one every time. Yeah. With a debit card, you could just buy things online. Yeah. Debit card, credit cards, you're better off to but how? How what? Because like, I What's like the difference between a credit card and a like, debit card? A credit card is money that they're kind mm-hmm. of like loaning to you and you're going to pay it back eventually um, or over time. Debit card takes it right out of your account immediately. Yeah. Bro, I'm too poor for this. Um, oh. Not to mention, you probably should be involved with the bank because you will be needing loans and stuff in the future yeah. for school or whatever else. Yeah, like yeah. in Monopoly. Like yeah. in Monopoly. Yeah. And I mean, it's... Uh, I'm sure you guys will one day want to buy your own house. The bank will give you a loan for your house. So it's good to, and it's smart to start off whatever your parents' bank is to start there. And then if you want to move on once you reach the age of 18, um, then yeah, move on to a different bank if you want or stay with that bank. Like I said, we'll talk, this will be more explained in a video that we're going to watch. So this is how you balance your checking account. Um, so each month you'll get a, um, a statement from the bank or whatever, and it'll give you your end pot and ending amount balance for the previous month. So let's pretend it's the end of, I don't even know what the hell month we're in. April? Are we in April? We're in April. (laughs) So say we got March. So we'll, we got our March statement. It's say we got a balance of $3,000, whatever. So that would go there. Step two, you would put all the money that you spent. So date, whatever, April, blah, 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 the amount. So this step two is where you put that and then total it. Step three, balance, uh, add step one and balance to step two. So your ending amount, or I'm sorry, step two is the money that you put into the bank. So your, if you work, your checks, your, if you got, if it was your birthday, that kind of money you put in. So that would be there. Step three would be the total. Say we add another 2,500. So then step three total is 20 or 5,500. Step four, list all the checks, withdraw, ATM withdrawals, any purchases is purchases that you made so you put the date what it was for the amount add them all up step f- five would be you minus your step three total to step two uh step four total so say you spent three thousand in the whole month so your total would be what if you had fifty five thousand fifty five hundred spend three thousand how much do you have left What was the question? 5,500 minus 2,000. Three. No. (laughs) 300? I don't know. I don't know how checks work. Just minus 5,500 minus 2,000. 5,100? Oh, it's 35. 3,500. What do you mean? What do you mean right now? What are you talking about? 5,500 minus 2,000 is what? You said 200. What are you talking about? I said 2,500. 2,500. No, no, no. You said 200. No. Well, that's how you do it. All right, let's watch this video real quick. Hopefully this works. I see your little loading thing. Did you hear that? No. I I don't hear anything. Uh, it's no. not moving either. I don't know if it's moving on your screen. Oh, is it not sharing? I am Kim. She does what she wants. <sighs> Nate, I got another reusable straw. Nice. <laughs> Let's, uh, it's metal, too, so. <laughs> well, 
I threw it away at Chick Fil A. We had to go dig through the trash and get it out. I. We went to the hockey game. Oh, I did. I went to the hockey game. Water. Okay. No fair. Did you guys see the video part or no? I just see a picture of. Yeah, I see a picture. Do you see that it's a green screen right now? No. No. Technology will be hard though. Cam also sees the picture. Did you see this? Uh, it's green now, yes. Okay. Teaching your teen how to manage a checking account. Yes. All right. Here's the video. Watch it. It's only a couple minutes long. Opening a checking account is an important step oh, yeah. in your teen's financial life. And it's a great opportunity for you to talk to him or her about managing spending and setting savings goals. When you think your teen is ready, it may be when he gets his first job or when you feel he's mature enough. Here are a few things to keep in mind as you choose the right account and teach him how to use it responsibly. At most banks, you can open a teen checking account when your child is 13. And one parent is usually required to be a joint owner of the account until your child turns 18. As a joint owner, you'll have the ability to monitor and access this account if you wish. Most banks offer online and mobile account access, so your teen can check his account status at any time. Some accounts also have text and email alerts that your teen can set up that will warn him of suspicious purchases or low balances, which can be helpful for a teen who is just getting used to managing his own money. As you do your research, take into account both the features and fees associated with each account to choose the right one for you and your child. Once you and your teen sign up for an account, she will receive a checkbook and debit card in her name. Make sure she keeps these in a safe place and doesn't lend them to anyone, including her friends. Encourage your child to keep track of her account and check her balance regularly. The convenience of modern banking has its downsides, especially for a teen who is learning how to manage her own money for the first time. If she doesn't keep track of her account, she might not realize the rate at which she's spending, which means she could run the risk of bounced checks, overdraft penalties, declined transactions, or minimum balance fees. There are several ways your teen can keep track of her account. First, suggest that she keep a transaction register. Some checkbooks come with these booklets, which your teen can use to record her deposits and withdrawals and keep a record of her balance. If your teen has a smartphone, she might find it easier to keep a transaction register using a checking app. It can be difficult to keep records on the go, so encourage her to save receipts from her transactions, like store purchases and ATM withdrawals, and have her record them in her transaction register later when she's home. Next, encourage her to log into her account every few days to view her balance and recent transaction history and to check this against her transaction register. Does her online account balance reflect her own records? If it doesn't, it may be because certain transactions haven't posted yet. And each month when her statement arrives, she should sit down and review the charges and deposits. This is a great opportunity for her to recognize how much she's spending on what. It can also help when she's making a budget and deciding how much to set aside for a long-term savings goal. Finally, suggest that she sets recurring reminders on her calendar or phone to sit down and look everything over. Reviewing her transactions thoroughly can also help her notice any suspicious purchases. Unfortunately, account fraud is a rising concern, especially for teens. She should go through her statement item by item to verify each purchase is hers. If she notices any suspicious activity, be sure to contact her bank as soon as possible. Almost all checking accounts have fees. Even a free checking account, which might not have a monthly fee, will likely have other fees. Teaching your teen about the fees associated with his account can help him avoid them. The three most common fees are monthly account fees, overdraft fees, and fees for using out-of-network ATMs. Many checking accounts will have a monthly account fee or a monthly maintenance fee if the account drops below a minimum balance. Overdraft fees can be charged if your teen tries to withdraw more money than he has in his account. It can happen as a result of a check, a debit card purchase, or an ATM withdrawal. If your teen writes a check for more than he has in his account, there's generally a fee. But a few different things can happen if your teen overdraws with a debit or ATM card. By default, your teen's debit transactions won't be covered by any overdraft services. So any overdraft he makes with his debit card is typically declined and he simply won't be able to make the transaction. But some parents opt in to an overdraft service. So if your teen is in an emergency, he'll be able to use his card to pay for whatever he needs and he won't be declined. However, these services usually come with fees. There are two common overdraft services, 
overdraft coverage where the bank might authorize an overdraft, but charge a fee if enough money isn't deposited back into the account in the same business day. And overdraft protection, which can allow your teen to overdraw his account and transfer money in from another linked account, generally for a lower fee. While these can be good options in case of an emergency, if your teen makes a mistake and overdraws his account, even by a dollar, it's likely to result in a fee. Now, the account you set up may not have fees for overdraft services, or you may decide to pay the overdraft fees yourself. Regardless, consider setting some penalty so he understands that there are consequences for overdrawing his account, and he can learn that avoiding overdrafts is important. The best way your teen can avoid an overdraft is to routinely keep track of her balance in a transaction register and regularly confirm her balance online. She might also be able to sign up for text alerts from her bank that warn her when her balance is getting low. As she checks her account balance online, she should be very aware that what she sees as available in her balance might not be how much she really has to spend. For example, she might not realize that a check she wrote can take a long time to clear if the other person doesn't deposit it immediately. Or if she uses her debit card to pay for gas at the pump, the next time she logs into her account online, she might see a pending transaction for more or less than the actual cost of the gas she just bought. While the transaction is pending, the funds on hold won't be available for her to use, and it might take a few days for the final amount of the transaction to post to her account. This is one of the reasons why it's important for her to keep a transaction register that she can check against her account balance. She should also be aware of when money deposited into her account becomes available. She might not understand that only a portion of her deposit could be immediately available for use. Many banks show in their online transaction page when funds from deposits will be available. Have her consider signing up for direct deposit if she has a job and her employer offers it. Direct deposits are usually available immediately which could mean her paycheck posts to her account quicker. ATM fees are another frequent charge that your teen might not be aware of. Most banks allow customers to withdraw money from their own ATMs without a fee. But if he uses ATMs at other banks or privately owned ATMs, like the ones you find in stores and gas stations, he will likely be charged a fee. And his own bank might charge an additional fee for an out-of-network transaction. Your teen can avoid these fees by only withdrawing money from his own bank's ATM. Most banks also list their ATM locations online and have mobile apps that can show your teen where their closest ATM is. Your teen might also avoid ATM fees by getting cash back when he buys something at some stores. One other thing to be aware of with ATM fees, most banks will allow an unlimited number of withdrawals per month, but some accounts might have a fee after a certain number of withdrawals have been made. Getting a first checking account is a big step towards financial independence for teenagers, helping them understand how their accounts work and encouraging them to get in the habit of regularly monitoring their accounts can help them learn how to manage their money responsibly. Doing so will help set the foundation for good money habits in their future.